it's a current limiter and you can just use an, an automotive bulb like this that has dual filaments and you put it in line with the red wire that goes from the battery to your aircraft and all you have to do is solder these two pads together on one piece of the red wire and then bring another red wire off here and I think you kinda have to sand the surface of the bulb to get the solder to stick but basically that's it just get a two filament you can use a single filament but two filaments kinda limits the current to about two amps if there's a short and protects your battery and can protect the components on your quadcopter or whatever you have it connected to and this is good while you're building and here's a bunch of examples now Hobby King has tried to copy this but they missed the mark they came up with this thing called the boom stopper which is a fuse but they totally missed the idea of how this thing is supposed to work plus if the fuse blows you have to replace it each time with the bulb you don't have to replace it the bulb just lights up if you have a direct short the battery will be protected, the light will come on, and it'll just be like the battery is running a bulb. It won't hurt the battery, it'll draw about 2 amps, and if your battery is capable of putting out 2 amps, which most of them are, it won't hurt the battery a bit. So that's the basic idea. So now I'll take you to the bench and we'll take a look at ours. You can see these are basically just two plugs and the black wire goes straight through. Let me bring this up. So the black wire goes straight through and then the red wire is broken and the bulb is put in the middle. So that's basically all there is to it. So here is the smoke stopper that John designed and he 3D printed this block right here. And a couple of the features that he's added to this that I like is one is he added a switch. So the switch is off in the up position and then on in the down position. So that lets you turn your quad on and off as needed while you're configuring and whatnot. That's handy. The other thing is it has a socket where the bulb is removable. So if the bulb does blow, which it probably never will, but if it does, you can replace the bulb very easily. And there's two pins on the bulb. You notice on these bulbs that one pin is lower than the other pin. And uh, the reason for that is on a automobile they have to go in a certain way because one of these pads or one of these terminals has to go to each filament and you see one filament's a little lower than the other one and to determine which one is going to be lit say you had sort of a high low beam thing or you had a tail light and a signal light this would differentiate and that's why the bulb only can go in a certain way in the automotive socket so John's accommodated that with two different height slots in here. So the bulb can only go in one way on this one too, because if you try to go the other way, it won't go all the way in. So not necessary, but it's a good idea. Because remember, these two pads here are going to be shorted together anyway, so it really doesn't matter. It could go in either way, but there it is. Now it's in there. And if you look, you can see how John's got some copper foil here in the bottom and on the side here. And right here, this lower piece is loose so that it puts uh, some tension on the bulb. It's kind of like a little spring. And then this side here just fits so tight that the bulb doesn't really, you know, break connection or anything like that. Okay, so there, it's in there now. So a removable bulb and a switch, I really like that. The other thing is he's put both connectors right on the box here. So what you would do is you would take a battery and plug that right here. And then this terminal could either go, if you know, if you can get the lead from your quad to go right on there, that's great. But if you don't have a lead, you can connect uh, one like this, an extension lead onto it. And then that goes to your quad. And if your quad doesn't happen to have an XT60, you could substitute it from, for some other adapter like this. So now i got a JST plug on there. So whatever you need, you can just adapt it to that by making different adapters. So those are those features. Now, if 
this actually gets shorted. Let me see if I can find a lead right here. A lead and put it on here like this. Now what I'm going to do is put a dead short across the battery but it won't do anything right away because I haven't thrown the switch. Okay, so I got a dead short across there. Now, see? The light just comes on. It didn't do anything to the battery, so it protected the battery. So therefore, if your aircraft happens to have a short while you're building it, say you short the, uh, the flight controller board against the frame, or you do something like that, some stupid thing while you're building it, then the light will just come on. If not, the quad will come on. Now you saw the light flash just one time because it took some energy to make the beeps on the motors. The motors are actually making the sound and when it first fires up through the ESCs and that took a little bit of current. So it took less than two amps but it did make the light light a little bit. Okay, and then just cut it off so I can just leave that hooked up while I'm working on my quad and whenever I need power I just throw the switch. Another advantage to this, not only does it protect the components on the quad somewhat, but it also, and it protects the battery, but it also keeps the props from spinning up all the way because there's only two amps and that's not really enough to run all four motors. So if the quad did accidentally come on and spin up, there wouldn't be enough power to do any damage. Of course, it's always recommended to take the blades off when you're working on it anyway. But if you were in a hurry at the field or something, and you were doing something, and it did fire up, there wouldn't be any damage done to, to you or anybody else because the blades wouldn't have enough power to spin. So that's another good reason. See, now Hobby Kings wouldn't be any good for that because they just have a fuse, and it might just spin up and try to fly away before it blew the fuse. So you can see how this works basically as a current limiter. The, the current can ramp up to about 2 amps, at which point the, the bulb will light up, and then it'll just remain at 2 amps. It won't go any more than that. So, John said we might ought to draw up a schematic just to show how to wire it. So here is the wiring diagram. And these are the XT60s. Now this one over here is the male one where the battery plugs into right here. And then goes to the automotive bulb. And these are the two terminals that are soldered together to the red wire. Which is the positive voltage, 12 volts. And here's the outside of the bulb can right here. And the red wire is soldered onto that. And you can you can sand that before you solder it and probably have to have rosin core or some flux to get it to stick. And a nice hot soldering iron. It isn't very hard, but those are some tips. Okay, this represents the two filaments in the bulb that are now joined at one end. And uh, the other ends go to ground. So they're in parallel now. That draws about 2 amps at 12 volts. Okay, now the wire comes off there and goes to the switch. This is just a simple on-off switch to one of the outside terminals and then from the middle terminal over to the female XT60 and this is the one that would represent the battery where it would usually be and that plugs into your multi-rotor or your airplane to run the ESCs and the other circuitry. So and then these two negative terminals are just connected together with one straight piece of wire. And here is the bulb that I use. It actually comes as a two-pack. It's a Sylvania, and there's the part number right there. And I got it at Walmart. And I'm sure you can get these just about at any automotive store. So, automotive store or department store. They'll be around. Easy to obtain. XT60 connectors, I think I got them from Hobby King, but you can find them in different places. So here's John's CAD design for the outer box of his smoke stopper right there. And here is the inner section where the bulb holder is and the mount for the switch. So if you have any questions, just leave them under the video. 
Uh, I think John could be convinced to put these files up on Thingiverse so they could be downloaded. But if you don't want to go to all that trouble, you can just go ahead and solder up the components and then put some electrical tape or liquid electrical tape on it to protect it. You don't have to have the plastic box. So just in closing, I want to mention that you do have to use a 3S LiPo with these bulbs. If you go above a 3-cell LiPo, like to a 4-cell, the bulb will probably just blow. So for testing purposes, use a 3S LiPo. But like I said, there's an RC group thread that has a lot more information on there. It talks about other wattage bulbs for other applications and things like that. So you might want to look at that thread and just see what they have to offer as far as information. But uh, if you have any questions, I'll try my best to answer them. Just put the question under the video. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. And subscribe if you're not subscribed. Have a happy new year and happy flying. Take your